Our honored guest has arrived. <laughs> and Mary, to your left. Am I there? You're there. Hi, folks. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Oh, Linda. Hi, people. We can see you now, Mary. Stephen, you sat at my table at Booktopia. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. How are okay. you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And, um... Most of these people here, oh, here comes Janet. Um, I think Janet was at our table too, Steve. I think she was. And okay. uh, there she is. Hi, Janet. You're muted, Janet. You're muted, Janet. Should Janet, I? Put, there you go. Should I put my mask on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at work, so I have mine on. Yeah, that's okay. That's Maddie, right. thank six you. feet away. Yeah, that's, thank you, Patty, for doing that. That's my sister, Sue. And Hi, Sue. Hi there. And uh, I gifted her husband a copy of your first book. And he'll be he'll be joining in a second. Yeah. All and right. He evidently really liked it. And Mary, Mary Sweet, is the one that you signed the book for for her birthday last night. Thank October. you. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I so enjoyed it. Good. Thank Good. you so much. And I've been bugging. Is Mary it's Kate? The guess, guess who I'm looking at? My girlfriend. <laughs> I thought we were going to keep that on the down low, Steve. Well, as, as exciting, it's, you know, excitement like this can't be held back. <laughs> so where's Mary Kate? Yeah, she wants to see you. Oh, my God. Hi, Mary Kate. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. <laughs> is, is he behaving? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing his favorite thing, being stuck in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like all of us. Have a good call, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks, Mary Kate. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Well, how is everyone doing? Um, staying safe? Staying well? Um, yeah, look. Anybody here have their shot yet? I've had two. Yeah, I've had two. Two. Okay. I've had the first. Um, get the next one in two weeks. Okay. So, and I'm still going to stay inside. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have to write. Well, uh, there's writing to be done. There's bourbon to be drank. Um, there's good science fiction on TV that needs to be watched. Um, so, Who has time I'm, for TV? I'm sorry? Who has time for TV? <laughs> oh, I better have time for TV since uh, they just bought the rights to the books. Oh! <laughs> Tell them why. Wow. Tell them who's going to play August. Oh, uh, if you folks are familiar with uh, Keegan Michael Key, um, young man who was on a TV show called um, Key, well, and Peel. Key and Peel. Right. And if you watch the White House Correspondents' Dinner one year when President right. Obama spoke, he was. Luther, Luther, President Obama's alter self, the angry Obama. Oh, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the angry yeah. interpreter. Yes. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank yeah, it you. is. Thank you. Do you get it's involved nice. in, in the writing of those scripts? Or is it out of your hands? Thank you. Um, I'm not involved with uh, the writing of the scripts. Uh, let me tell you what my function is. Uh, I have been named 
consulting producer. That means I get coffee for everybody else. <laughs> That's my job. It sounds so, good. <laughs> so where are they going to shoot it? Well, the gentleman that is writing the screenplay right now um, is a guy named um, Paul Eckstein. And Paul has written for um, Law and Order, Criminal Intent, um, Narcos on Netflix, and now he has a show on Showtime called um, The Godfather of Harlem. So he's, he's a wonderful writer. Um, he's done a lot of great work, so I'm... I'm thrilled to have him doing it. I'll focus on the books. You know, I don't, I don't need to go Hollywood just yet. So, um, but he's done good work. Okay. And it's being produced by um, Opie. Come on, you guys know who yeah, Opie yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. He lives near me. And um, also uh, Gaston Media and CBS. So we'll see how it goes. That's exciting, though. I, I would it, think. You know, it is exciting, but not unlike you, I'm a Midwesterner. So uh, it's one of those things of I'll believe it when the check clears. <laughs> <laughs> I get no, that. Just... Show me the money. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Until, until then, you know, it's um, rinsing the dishes, put them in the dishwasher, and washing the sweatpants that I've been wearing since, oh, February. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> Talk about exciting. I did not realize how little wardrobe we actually require. Isn't that the truth? Um, when I put jeans on, when I put pants on to go outside, it's like, you know, well, I should be visiting the queen now. Let's visit the queen. I'm wearing grown up clothes. <laughs> But, I yes. Go no, go ahead. No, I'm I'm starting to feel a little bit like you remember Oscar from The Odd Couple. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, exactly. So. I'm reading I'm reading the new biography about Mike Nichols right now. Oh, okay. And Mike Nichols uh, directed that on Broadway. Yes. And it, Turned out Walter Matthau was very Oscar like. <laughs> Walter Matthau was one of my favorites, my, one of my all time. He could do drama. Remember um, the taking of Pelham 123? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, man, what a great movie that is. That was awesome. I, I, love, I love Walter Matthau. Especially when he was clowning around with Jack Lemon. That was, you know. Oh, they were a couple. Couldn't beat those guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, others Patty? may not know about this. Oh, yes. Um, but, um, okay, I was distracted because now there's another Mary Sweet on. But anyway, <laughs> now what? The voters have spoken. Essays on life after Trump. And Steve has an essay in here. All right. And so, I take, pardon? I take it Mr. Jones is a Trump supporter. Uh, well, just, uh, as, just as much as you are, Heather. Okay. 
<laughs> well, you know, the thing with that book is a collection of essays by a number of wonderful writers, people. Um, and um, the prerequisite for the book was to write it two days after the election. Wow. Well, we know how the results extended uh, and the fighting began. But once it was announced, um, the clock was running. So we had um, 24, 48 hours to write our initial raw responses. And, um, and that's, that's essentially what the book is, a, a, a testament to um, how people saw the election, um, what their views were. Um, and it was a diverse collection of views, uh, among which was Anthony Scaramucci. Remember him and his brief time at the White House? Um, so it's... it's it's very interesting um, the responses um, that the editor um, got. So I hope you have a chance to read it. Um, if you don't, that's okay. I don't get any royalties from it. I do have a question. Yes. Have you, have, because of this essay. Yes. Have you read Howard Zinn's book? Oh, uh, American history? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Just in the last week, I've come across a book. I don't remember the exact title, but it's something like How Howard Zinn Got It All Wrong. Ah, the naysayers come out. Well, I think Howard Zinn is, uh, personally, I think he's a genius. And it's the American history that I believe should be taught along with other tomes on American history. And Janet, don't get mad at your dog. What's your dog's name? I just saw him in, in your- Yeah, seat. his name is Teddy. He's, he's still a puppy, so I beg, I beg an excuse for him. He's a sweetie. He just wants mom's attention for a little bit. He'll <laughs> do anything to get it. There's a lot of dog people on here. <laughs> you bet. You know, I love dogs. I love cats. Um, so flip a coin. I'm happy. Hey, you Patty? have both? <laughs> I've had both. Um, and I've I've loved both. I can't I can't have a dog or a cat right now because you know it breaks my heart thinking about my other cats and dogs and you know I don't want to go through that again. Um, but just so that you know, um, I as a writer will spend maybe an hour and a half writing before I look at cat videos. Wow. I have to. Before have you to. looked at what? I'm sorry? I didn't hear what you said. Before you looked at what? I look at cat videos. <laughs> or, or cute dogs. Or things like that. Because I, I like to believe that there's, there's hope in the world and I always see it in the eyes of a cat or a dog. So. Yeah. So, Patty, um, did you want me to formally um, introduce myself somehow? Or? Yes, that would be great. I think um, we may have one or two more people joining us, but I think oh. most everybody is here. So okay. we'll go ahead and get started. And I know some of some people read your book, All the Snow. Some read, read Lives Laid Away um, or Listen to Lives Laid Away is on Hoopla, and our library has Hoopla. Um, and I know some people read both, and I don't know if there's any that are on here that haven't read any of them yet, but we just like to hear whatever you want to tell us. I do have one particular question, but I'll wait and see if you yes. answer it with what you tell us. Okay. All right. Well, 
to formally kick things off, um, and you know, Linda sidetracked everybody here, so you know, it's that it's never first, happens. Uh, that never first, happens. Uh, um, my name is Stephen Mac Jones, and yes, the middle name Mac is my real middle name, uh, named after my grandfather, uh, McCullough. Uh, they call me Mac. And I'm the author of, um, well, it's going to be three uh, thrillers. Uh, the first being August Snow, and the second being Lives Laid Away. And the third in the series is coming out um, this May 4th. Um, and it's called uh, Dead of Winter. And each book features uh, the same main character um, by the name of August Snow, August Octavio Snow. And August lives in a part of Detroit called Mexican Town. And uh, it's, as you can tell from the name, it's predominantly Mexican. Um, but it's been a part of Detroit for nearly a hundred years. And uh, Mexicans, Mexican Americans came to Detroit um, at the turn of the century and really started coming to Detroit for the very same reasons that African Americans migrated from the South to Detroit. Good, solid work in Henry Ford's plants. Um, and it didn't matter if you were white, black, brown, yellow. Um, Henry Ford paid you the same wage for the same work. And that was, that was different for a lot of uh, minorities then. So it was opportunity. And, and as I said, Mexican town is has been around for nearly 100 years. I believe actually over 100 years. Um, August Snow is a former Marine, a uh, former Detroit policeman, um, and he was kicked out of the Detroit Police Force um, by a corrupt mayoral um, administration. He sued the city and won $12 million in a wrongful, um, wrongful dismissal suit. And this is a guy who, it's not really money that makes him happy. It's people that make him happy. Uh, it is known that he is of use to people. Uh, in, in a, a very generous, um, unselfish way. Um, but he has returned to his Mexican town neighborhood um, and that's where things launch from, um, his childhood home in Mexican town. <coughs> and, um, that's, that's where we're at with August Snow. Um, the first book won um, several awards, including the Hammett Triumph for Crime Fiction, um, the, oh, um, a couple of other awards. I, my mind just went blank. Uh, the Nero Award for Crime Fiction and uh, the Michigan Notable uh, book from the Library of Michigan. Uh, the second book, Lives Laid Away, was nominated for the Ian Fleming um, Steel Dagger um, that was shortlisted. Uh, I did not win. And to add insult to injury, um, the British writer, Holly Watt, who did win 
asked me for a blurb for her new book. <laughs> she's uh, she's she's actually a wonderful writer. She's she's tremendous uh, and well deserved win. Um, and that's about it. Like I said, the uh, third book, Dead of Winter, um, comes out May fourth. Um, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, I've got some competition on May 4th because that's when the new Disney animated Star Wars series starts on May 4th. So what will people choose? <laughs> Reading or Star Wars? <laughs> but... Um, so that's that's a bit about me and Patty. I'm gonna guess what your question is. Uh, I'm guessing your question is how did I name him? That was one of my questions. Yes. Thought I had it. <laughs> uh, I it's it's odd because um, I had written a a three-page treatment for a story that eventually turned out to be August Snow. And um, I didn't have a name for the main character. Wherever, you know, um, the main character came in, I wrote in all capital letters, Hero. And it wasn't until I was um, mowing the back lawn, and we all know that mowing the back lawn is zen with power tools. It's, you know, you don't think about anything. One line, the other line, and it's straight. Uh, and two words settled on my brain. Uh, those words were August and snow. And I laughed it off, you know, it doesn't snow in August, it's really good. Uh, but the words would not leave me alone. Um, the words stayed with me for a week, two weeks. And after two weeks, I thought, well, I've only got two choices. One is to seek talk therapy help. And two is use it as a name in a, in a story. And since writing stories is cheaper than talk therapy, uh, and, you know, and there's no deductible, um, I used it um, to replace that capital letters hero. And that's, that's how um, August Snow was born. Um, well, that's, that's a little bit about me. We talked about, um, the movie deal and all or the tv show deal and all that and i just want you folks to know once again that i was i'm not writing these books um to get famous i'm not writing these books to impress people um i'm writing them quite honestly to amuse myself <laughs> Really, um, and that's that's the way I wrote um, the first book. It was to amuse myself, and and you know, since I couldn't read to my kids anymore, they're they're adults, and that's just weird to do. Um, so I decided to tell myself the stories, and that's how this came about. Um, because I, storytelling is, is so liberating and it's, it's a world unto itself. Um, and it's just thoroughly enjoyable. And before I knew it, I had over 300 pages. And I thought, well, you know, let's see what we can do with this. Hello. 
Mute yourself, what do you Heather. Mean my pizza's gonna be late. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered that pizza 45 minutes ago. Obviously, it's not Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> So, where, where, where did August come from, though? Um, is he partially you? Well, thank you, Linda. I wanted to ask the same thing. Ah, that's what I uh, wondered. Good one. Um, August is a part of me, but there are important differences, and those differences are. Um, August knows all about, he has military service. I don't have military service. Uh, he's familiar with weaponry. I, I detest guns. Um, he is, he's generally a lot braver than me. Um, and that's... I think we share the sense of humor and the occasional bad word, but you wouldn't want to depend on me in a fight. <laughs> you really wouldn't. Uh, that would just be sad. <laughs> Did you have to do a lot of uh, research on the military and on weapons? I did. Um, it took, it took me, Jan, I have to say this, Jan. Yeah. I love your hands. Oh, thank you. I love those hands. Um, we'll, we'll get back to those in a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had to do a lot of, um, well, let's put it this way. In the initial draft that I sent to, uh, my publisher, cell phone. Um, I used the term ex-Marine uh, to describe all of it. And the truth is there's no such thing as an ex-Marine. Um, there are former Marines. Uh, you were formerly a Marine. Um, and as far as uh, weapons go, uh, let's just say I hope the government never looks into my search history um, because I have to learn about uh, weapons, um, especially what kind of weapons um, most police forces issue. Um, and also, also gaining uh, an appreciation of what it would mean to be half Mexican American and half Black American. Because culturally, those are two minorities that rarely have gotten along. Um, it's, you can see that, that dynamic from New York to Detroit to Chicago to LA and all points in between. Um, so I wanted to make the point with August that somebody got along. At least for um, a little while. <laughs> well, yeah. But it's that was also, one of my questions. Yes. I'm sorry, that was one of my questions as well. I didn't know if you had any family or any background yourself that was Mexican or if you lived in that part of Detroit or if this was just something that you researched? It was something that I researched. Um, and I wanted to, in a way, honor both uh, minorities. They are the largest minorities in Detroit. And I wanted to you know, honor both as, as best I could. Um, because both have, have contributed um, quite a lot to the overall culture of Detroit. Um, and there's, there's something else that I wanted to honor. 
And that was, even with all the rough language uh, and the action and all that, I wanted to honor um, my parents. Um, August's parents are no longer living, um, but they raised him to know what true North ethically, morally was. And that is, that is something that was important for my parents to imbue in me and my brother. Um, so in, in a number of ways, when you read about, when you read these books, it's, it's a way for me saying, you know, August may get tested a lot from time to time. But it's his parents' guiding spirit um, that holds him to a code, that holds him to a code of honor. His parents and the military, his military background. And he may, like, like all of us, like all human beings, he may vary from that true north path, but at least he comes back to it. And like I've said before, um, if, you're, if you were leaving from uh, New York to London on a flight, that airplane doesn't go in a straight line. It makes course corrections along the way. And that's the way I think most human beings are. Um, you get tested sometimes, but you still know what a true North path is. That, that seemed to be how it was throughout the book that he would, you'd think he was gonna go too far or you'd think that he was gonna get off course but there was always a reason for what he did and there was always like good behind it in a way like yeah like um he was always helping someone he was always thinking about what he could do to help others even though he was kind of rough in his approach yes yes um oh for heaven's sake it's hello it's a place again But um, I think I think as far as August is concerned, he knows what uh, the law is, and he respects that. But he's also seen the need for justice, and since law and order sometimes is, is doesn't necessarily meet up with justice um august being free of of his police background now can apply both uh, or at least he thinks he can um, and it uh, frankly it gets a little rough for him in this third book. Um, one of the things for me was, since this is the third book, um, I wanted to challenge myself and challenge August uh, and not write the same book over and over. So um, the third book, Dead of Winter, is, is probably the most challenge that I've ever thrown at him. Um, in fact, um, my editor, you know, Juliet, at one point during the editing, she called me up and said, you don't like August very much, do you? 
And I do, I promise you I do, but um, I do not want to get into the, the, the pit of repeating myself because the formula works. Um, if I'm going to sit in the family room and tell myself a story on my laptop, then I've got to keep my own interest. Uh, how can I expect you to maintain your interest, your excitement, if I'm if I'm just slapping words together? Um, and then when I reach page 325 going, done, um, it's the writing has got to move me. It's got to inform me. Um, because how, how else am I going to um, at least try to move and inform readers? I like the way Mary Kate would talk about you sitting in your recliner writing and then you start <laughs> laughing or something because of something that you had August do. <laughs> Well, uh, let me, Linda, I'm glad you brought that up. Let me, let me give you an example of, of what Linda's talking about. My wife, Mary Kate, is, is long suffering. Okay. <laughs> um, there were times when we would be sitting in the family room in our separate chairs and, uh, she would be uh, watching TV or, um, going over some household thing, um, or taxes or whatever. And I would be sitting in my other chair just cranking it out. And, you know, the room essentially is quiet. Except for when August tells a joke that makes me laugh. And I have a big, shocking, echoing laugh. And the first time that happened, the first time I went, <laughs> she was she was launched out of her chair, almost <laughs> on the ceiling. And um, you know, I never did get over the look. Um, it, it's hard to explain to somebody that you just told the funniest joke on the page, and I'm sorry I scared you. Um, and the same happened when um, I killed a character. It surprised me because I wasn't planning on having this character die. Um, there are times when the story just takes on its own life. And this, this character, I finished writing the scene and I was in tears. And Mary Kate looked at me and said, are, are you okay? Are you all right? And I just looked at her, tears streaming down my cheeks, going, I just killed a character. <laughs> and, and that's where her pity ended. <laughs> Has it been different for you writing this last year? Um, yes and no. Um, yes, because um, like all of us, I think I think I've reached pandemic poop out. Um, it's it's exhausting. It's exhausting. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, and I'm not the only one that's going, I'm not the only writer that's going through this, of, well, why do I need to write, you know, the end is nigh. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's had a this year of isolation has been taken its toll on me, uh, everyone, everyone really. Um, 
you would think that I would say, okay, you finally got what you wanted, Steve. You're, you're inside. You don't have to go out. You know, um, when, when somebody suggests getting together with friends or whatever, you can always say, no, no, I don't want to do that. But the pandemic has taken that option away from me. You know, I don't like having options taken away from me. Um, nobody is coming to me saying, hey, you want to get together with me? No, nobody wants to get together. Uh, nobody wants to get closer than 6, 12, 18 feet. Um, so, yeah, it, it has been different. It has been difficult. And I know a lot of writers who had books published during this period. And the worst thing is not being able to go to your library and see you folks in person. Uh, not being able to go to bookstores and sign books and, and talk with readers. Um, and that's, that's very hard. That's very hard. I mean, this, what we're doing now is wonderful. Um, we found a way to get it together. Um, but there's nothing like, you know, shaking hands or, or a pat on the back or, or a hug. Um, it's it's yeah it's it's um, it's disheartening. Um, Is that going to change with your new book? And and that no, um, that's a good question. Um, it depends on what we see nationally by May fourth. Um, I think we're we're all. Um, the vaccinations have gone up, um, hospitalizations has gone down. If we can just keep on this track, maybe things will change uh, by May, just as long as you don't go to Texas or Florida on spring break. Um, and who, who here was planning on going on spring break? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. No? Nobody. <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully we'll have this under control by May or at the very least uh, June, July. Uh, How many? Do you I have guess any? In some ways. Come on. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Um, do you have any idea no, how many? I, I was just going to say. How many, what? How many books do you see being in the August Snow series? Do you have any idea what you plan? That's, that's a very good question and it's a very hard question to answer. Um, when the first book was published, I was, I was set to say, good. Um, done. Um, to be quite honest with you, I, I, there are other subjects that I want to explore. Um, I see three, I'm working on uh, a fourth August notebook. Um, but I'd like to, you know, um, stretch out a little bit. Uh, with something else. And I've got uh, two other projects that are all one. Um, does, that, does that answer your question? I, you know, I certainly can't see um, a run like Robert Parker or um, anyone else that has, you know, 16, 17, 20 books in a series. Um, one, because 
I got started uh, a little late. Um, this was published around my 62nd birthday. Um, so I do want to stretch a little bit with uh, other things. So I'm thinking four, maybe five books. What do you read, Steve? Who do what you do read? I read? Mm -hmm. Um, I read. Who do I read? Oh, you know, I'm actually reading a lot of um, arcs now. Um, books before they're released to the general public. There's something called an arc, and it's it's an uncorrected um, proof of the book. And they're usually sent out um, so folks can write a blurb for the book. So um, I will say that um, and Mary Kate and I just read uh, Light Seekers. So that's, that's a book to get uh, by uh, Femi Coyote. Uh, F E M I, Femi, K O D, K A Y O D E, um, and it's it's very interesting book. Very, um, it's it's a mystery uh, that takes place uh, in Nigeria, um, and. Um, yeah, so it's wonderfully written. Um, I've kind of gone back to a few of my um, my favorites. Um, Robert B. Parker. Um, and I'll tell you, I, I was not a fan when the Parker estate said, okay, we're going to continue, Spencer. We're going to continue... Um, Sonny Randall um, after Robert Parker died. I was not a fan of that. And then um, I believe Patty, did you did you have him at your library? I interviewed um, Mike Lupica. Yes, we have. Uh, who has taken over? Um, I'm sorry? No, we didn't have him here. I'm sorry, Patty? We, we have not had him here. Oh, okay. Okay. Mike Lupica well, um, is writing Parker I interviewed now? him for... Mike Lupica is writing the Jesse Stone series and also Sonny Randall. Oh, my. And uh, I interviewed him for um, a library, um, you know, uh, thing. And um, before I interviewed him, I read uh, his uh, two Jesse Stone novels and his Sonny Randall novel. And they were great. They were really good, and it made me feel comfortable once again, knowing that Parker was living through these books. He didn't write them, but his spirit was there. So, uh, and Ace Atkins is writing Spencer. Mm -hmm. And Ace does a tremendous job, just a tremendous job. Uh, so that's that's kind of where I'm at with, with um my reading um i can't i can't uh suggest highly enough that you read uh mike lupica's versions of jesse stone and sonny randall and um i can't suggest highly enough that you read ace atkins um also 
historical mystery fiction. Um, I would say James Ben. Uh, we share publisher, but he writes the World War II Billy Boyle mysteries. Mm -hmm. He's tremendous. Uh, and as I mentioned before, Holly Wah, um, who is, Holly is amazing. Uh, her first book is titled uh, The Deadline. Um, and it's, it's, she's just wonderful. She'll take you all over the world with her heroine. Um, but that's, that's pretty much what I'm, I'm reading these days. Stephen, I have a question. Um, you were talking about your third book. Yes. And you said, I think I remember you said yes. that, um, you were giving August the most challenges that you had given him yet yes. it's, does that yes. mean it's yes as, it's yes. as terrifying or more terrifying than the first one <laughs> um I, I, Let's just say that that um, he he's really feeling the weight of um, of who he is and what he can do, what he's capable of doing, and um, it is for him a realization that is a shock to the conscience. Um, and it's unfortunate, but the people in his neighborhood that know him and love him find themselves worried in the extreme about, about his mental attitude and possibly uh, PTSD. Um, having served in Afghanistan. So it was, uh, and PTSD is something that I wanted to um, address. Um, it may come a little late in the book, but you'll see what builds up to it. Um, because <clears throat> it's, it's great to have these heroes that were forged in war. Um, and seeing them handle life head on. But oftentimes we don't see the fear, the terror that they're holding on to, that they're trying to suppress. And in this book, it, August hits a wall as far as, um, what he knows about himself and what he can do, what he knows he can do, and the enemy that is in front of him. So, yeah, I think did that I'm answer still, your question, Mary? Yeah, yeah, it did. I think I'm still suffering from PTSD from your that warehouse scene in your first book. Oh, sorry about that, Wally. You're you're gonna love Belle Isle, um, and Belle Isle is is where the action culminates. So, um, are you familiar with Belle Isle, folks? It's it's an island that is in the Detroit River. And it's, it's considered a state park now. Um, and that's where the, uh, the action accelerates. So stick with me, Mary, okay? Just power through it, okay? Okay, I will. Does anybody yeah. else have any questions hey, for Stephen? Yeah, that, one thing in listening today, to for the second time 
to um, Lives Laid Away, you used, um, oh, what's her name? Lucy was going to the UP. Now, I know that yes. Sue knows and Jan knows and Nancy knows, but now that I'm in Central Ohio versus God's country, um, if I say UP to people, they go, huh? So, so that just struck me right yeah. today um i didn't notice it when i read it the first time one of, how many of the restaurants that you mentioned actually exist or are they all figments of your imagination um all of them exist except for two uh cafe consuela uh, which is a combination of, I, I couldn't pinpoint one taqueria that I love in Mexican town. So I just smashed them all together into Cafe Consuelo. Uh, so that's one that I made up. The second is uh, Schmier's Deli. <laughs> because the same thing uh i couldn't think of a particular really you know i have eaten my way through three books um all of the all of the other restaurants are real uh that i mentioned okay um one because i love to eat and two because these are great places um they're great places and i wanted to give a shout out to them, whether they read the book or not. Um, and you, you never know who is reading because with the first book I got, I hate to use this term because I'm still coming to grips with being a published writer, but I got a piece of fan mail from Australia, Australia. And the gentleman said, you know, well, Detroit's on my bucket list now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. You know, that's, that's a wonderful thing. When you can talk about all of the options and wonder of the place that you live, and somebody from Australia writes you and says, that's on my bucket list. Um, I've done my job. Yeah. Um, so that's, any, any other questions? Did I introduce you to my writing partner? Is that yeah, Godzilla? Godzilla? Um, it's Godzilla. Um, you know, I don't want to make a big thing out of it, but, uh, so to speak, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I how, have how Godzilla much, up with my, um, awards. How much does he ghostwrite? How much? <laughs> how much does Godzilla ghostwrite? Uh, nothing. He, uh, he writes absolutely nothing. He contributes nothing. And if you've seen his resume, his resume is only stomping on Tokyo. Uh, that's <laughs> it. But, you know, I like having him nearby. So, so. Anyone with a question? I love I'm you, I'm still Stephen. looking at those, Jan. I love you, Stephen. I spread love your you name too, wherever I can. <laughs> Oh, bless your heart. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate, you know, being with you folks tonight. Um, you know, support the library, uh, support your um, independent bookstores. Uh, we need them more than ever now. Mm -hmm. um, so just just give those folks a bit of love, okay? Mm. Um, 
So, so yeah. Uh, so what a treat. And Linda, <laughs> thank you for including me. And I can't wait to read the book that Linda gave to my husband as soon as he <laughs> lets go of it. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. I've now got three new books on my list. <laughs> Part of the reason I love them oh, is because well, Detroit, hey. Detroit was like the home away from home. So you're writing about yeah. places that I'm familiar with. Um, and of course, our favorite baseball team, right? You know, the Tigers. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, you know, um, my mom was born in Youngstown. Ah. And I have relatives in Cleveland. So, you know, I, I love Ohio. Maybe not Ohio State. <laughs> you can't blame me there. But, you know, I, I, do, I do, my heart is filled with Ohio. I keep telling people now that I'm down proximate to that college you just mentioned. I keep telling people if we, meaning Michigan, hadn't lost the first war, I would have been from Toledo, Michigan instead of Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> and then I have to explain well, that's the whole why thing. We have that zigzag border, isn't it? What was that would be a Michigan zigzag Ohio border. That, yeah, the zigzag border. Well, what happened, the explanation is that the original northern boundary of Ohio was supposed to be a straight line from the tip of Michigan straight across Indiana until it hit Lake Erie. Yes, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, you're drawing, okay. The problem was, the problem was they weren't drawing Lake Michigan long enough. So that's why Toledo should have been part of Michigan. And the federal government ended up awarding Toledo to Ohio and to compensate Michigan, they gave them the UP which had been part of Wisconsin, who has been quiet for <laughs> almost 200 years. So, <laughs> right, Jan? Let me, tell you, uh -huh. let me tell you something. There are more people in Toledo than there will ever be in the UP. <laughs> but the UP had some of the richest copper and tin mines. So there was finance. Yes. 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 Uh, in fact, if you look at um, the sewer street sewer covers, and who doesn't look at street sewer covers? <laughs> um, a lot of them were made in uh, the Upper Peninsula, um, from war in the Upper Peninsula. That's a little known fact that everybody loves. <laughs> Did you read Mary Gloria Russell's book, The Women of Copper Country? I did. No, no, I haven't read it. Any. It's about the UP and the and the oh. uh, help me, Jan. The um, the union fights. Yeah, over the copper mines, and how the women helped the, the miners dig right. in. So. Okay, all right. Well, um, you know, well, thank I, you very much. I'm I... hoping that. Um... Oh, my pleasure. This is wonderful. Yes, it really is. Thank you to Thank Linda you. for making it's our connection great. with Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very it's much. Very, very enjoyable. Thank, Thank you all. Absolutely. Thank you.
Thank you very much for letting us borrow you for an hour. Good <laughs> see you, everyone. Thank you, you all. You know Thank that, you. Man. All Bye. right. Take care, folks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah.